Hey guys and welcome to my first video that I have recorded for YouTube. This is my introduction video and in this introduction video I want to talk a little bit about myself, uh, my experience so far in life and sort of like create this baseline between me and you guys so you understand who I am, have a little bit more about my background and hopefully you're gonna enjoy my content so yeah let's get into it. I'm just uh, a guy coming from this small town in northeast of Bulgaria. I'm gonna go through the, the major experiences I had in my life that are actually key moments. It's my journey has been a long one. I always had this non-fitting personality to an extent. I'm not always the most sociable guy, especially as a, as a younger guy, as a younger teenager. And I always had this not fitting mentality this mentality that I want to escape authority to an extent. So around 14, 15, I remember pretty clearly, I saw this magazine, um, a magazine about movies. So it's like a movie magazine. So maybe it was even earlier. Uh, maybe I was smaller because that's right around when uh, the movie The Beach came out. So they were having these images from the beach. Uh, from the location and the set and I just remember that I was super fascinated by this extraordinary beauty that I couldn't believe it was actually on earth. I was really surprised that this place is called Thailand, it was on the Koh Phi Phi Islands. Fast forward a couple of years later, around 14 I went to high school, so two years in, into high school my next door neighbor uh, got accepted to this scholarship program they had. Uh, so she went to Bangkok in this um, high school. And I was super curious. I was in this environment where I wanted to have a change. I wanted to, to an extent, run away from my parents, from this authority that I had. So I went to these two exams that, that were in English and maths. So they offered me 50% scholarship and I was super excited, but I had to go and get the permission from my parents to let me go through and just leave my country, leave my, my town, leave my parents when I was just 16. I went to Thailand, I went to this boarding school that is just outside of Pattaya called the Regent School. Those two years uh, in Thailand were one of the most challenging I had up to that moment in my life. And I just remember arriving in, in Thailand with the airplane, um, the airport just opened the gates to go outside, right? Uh, and this humid, super hot air just, you know, jumped in my face and I was like, oh my God. Is the aircon still blowing? You know, the aircons on the top that are just blowing hot air. But no, I was just walking a couple of steps outside and it's like, oh my God, this is this is super warm and super humid. How am I gonna survive this place? Thailand was, was like a breaking point for me and I always have this relationship with Thailand as this is, I guess, my first experience, real experience, just outside by myself to an extent, just trying to navigate life. Yeah, I, I, I tried to escape one authority in the face of my parents and I went to a different authority just created by these rules in place, having different boarding schools for boys and girls. And yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because like you're always trying to leave a certain place or to escape something, at least in my life, uh, to an extent. And then you get into like a more difficult situation, but that's how we grow. So that was something that I'm super proud that I pushed. And of course, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and uh, thankful to my parents because they've let me go and achieve this um, freedom and this experience that I had in my life. Um, and just to clarify some things, I'm, I was not the, the most uh, excited student. I was not the most excited person to be in school. I always had this uh, relationship with authorities. I was not happy to be told what to do. So I was having, so pretty much having pushed the other way when someone was telling me that I want, that I had to do something in that particular sense. So I was having, having I, was, I was always having this authority issues to an extent. And, and yeah, that was, that was talent. And I, I've grown so much uh, since, since that moment and just have this positive experience. And I just imagine this 16 year old guy uh, living in a boarding, boarding school outside of Patia, one of the, you know, the biggest sin cities in, in the world. And just going out with friends and the people that are in the day school, just in the day school and just in the, 
and from from the boarding school as well just going out on walking street and going to clubs going to bars and i i remember we went also to to bangkok a couple of times um especially after we graduated so this is just another story we've graduated so i was i was 18 i think we we've done the exams we were in this program called international baccalaureate i think it's a it's a french program don't quote me on this so international baccalaureate program and after all the exams all the preparations uh we got a certain amount of guys and girls from from our class we went to bangkok we went to parties we went to a khao san road this backpackers place that is super famous around the world and we went on the train i think it was about 12 hour train from from bangkok to to this place that w- that was just outside of um kopanyan uh, i don't i don't remember the actual place but it was a 12 hour train that was a sleeper train super interesting we had these bunk beds that were just dropping from the top we were just talking between ourselves we were buying food from people who were just jumping on the train and i don't remember how much time we spent in Copania for the full moon party but it was just one of the biggest experiences that I had in my life I'm, I mean I was 18 years old just imagine going with your friends to to Thailand when you're 18 and just having fun and going to to these huts on the beach on the other side of the beach where where the party was so just on the opposite side of the island and yeah it was it was pretty amazing experiences just going to different places going to cheap places I mean we we're students uh, going to cheap places, meeting some foreign people, it was like super interesting and I I had this realization that nobody cared where I am from um, and I always have this, I guess it's a, it's a mental issue that I have with myself, maybe uh, maybe it was just like external pressures or, or whatever the case may be I always had this thing that I'm from Eastern Europe, right, and, and people from Eastern Europe are looked in a different way, but like when I went to Thailand, nobody cared about any of this. So it was I was just accepted as one of the one of the guys, one of the one of the international people. So th- there was this community that we created. That was one of the biggest growth experiences I had because I had to adapt to this new environment. I had to adapt to these new rules. And yeah, pretty much my life changed and I've grown so much in these two years. And I just remember coming back home and just seeing the people are from high school are still you know doing the same things uh so yeah that was that was something super eye-opening uh, in my life and just like pushing me to just, just pushing me outside of my comfort zone so yeah that was that was one of the biggest experiences that i had and just like one of the brightest in terms of in terms of memories and in terms of like not caring about the world i was not super strict in school i mean i had a lot of pressures from externals but like for me it was it was just more about self-developing um finding yourself and and yeah experiencing the other side of the world different cultures fast forward a couple of years i got into the uk uk is a more of a faster story i got accepted to this university in northeast again it's the university of Hull. i studied economics there it was it was a different experience coming from Thailand to England. England is like super more strict. People are in their packs. People are in their groups of friends. Moving from high school, you still have this international community that you actually got together to an extent, but it was not the same as as in as in high school. I remember that just the experience in university is totally different. Like in high school, everybody pushed you to do this, this, and this because it has to be done by this, this, and this. But in university, nobody cared. So university is more like real life. You have to navigate life by yourself. There's no rules. There are no policies. There are no tutors. There are no teachers. You have lecturers. And then if you do your your exam or you do your course, it's fine. And they, and they grade it. But if you don't, life goes on. There's not a lot of push to do these certain things. It's more like you go to lectures. You study. You go to the exams. And... Yeah, that's it. I just, one of the funniest experiences in university was the first year, I remember me and my friend, we were having better grades while going out most of the time every, I don't know, every weekend or a couple of times a week. 
we're having better grades than later on in the second and third year. But yeah, that was just that's just life. I was doing this program in university. I was supposed to go to this internship, but then it was the recession of 2008 and 2009 impacted Europe more or less. And I just remember applying to different jobs, trying to get internship because I wanted to have this experience before leaving university to actually experience life and see what type of job I want to, I want to work in. And I got nothing. <laughs> I really got nothing. And I took a year off and went back home. I did three internships, one in a bank, uh, super boring and kind of straightforward, nothing of experience that I want to have in my life. So that's, you know, push forward, moving on. And the next one was in this Forex type of trading company that was a bit sketchy. I actually went to, to get like, it was a normal job. It was not an internship. I was supposed to get a job, but the method was first you go to this course and then you start trading by yourself. And then if you want to stay and, and actually earn money, you have to teach other people how to invest in Forex and navigate the, the pairs and how to check out the candles, do analysis and stuff like that. So that was super both interesting and sketchy because I'm 20 years old and just trying to teach people that are older than me how to trade on stocks. And the whole idea was the company wanted to have more people inputting their money through their platform and stuff like that. So that was sketchy and I left, of course. Um, I didn't get any money out of it. So I had this experience of just talking in front of people, talking in front of like a crowd of 15, 20 people and just going through different lectures. I was super nervous, more nervous than I am now. And I was wearing a, you know, a suit, I wear a tie and a shirt and everything, trying to look as professional as, as Wall Street as I can uh, in my head, of course. And yeah, that was that was life uh, when I was 20. And then the final the final internship that I have in this this one year was um, this place called Elana. Uh, they're actually still active. I was going through different departments. I was going through the far departments of investment. So that was going through European programs. Not really interesting. Reading about 50 pages of laws created by the European Parliament. So you can ask for European funds to create businesses, expand businesses, buy machinery, whatever the case may be. I went also to the Forex, just working with the people that actually do the daily bulletins about what happened to the markets. And I had this experience from just creating the analysis. I was just talking to people. Kind of interesting, but not my thing as well. And I went to this energy efficiency. So that was a totally different part of the of the building. Just this small office, I think, with two guys. They were having a lot of time on their hand. They were super nice, super helpful. And I got to experience a little bit more about research, how things are happening, different parts of the country where they're the best for solar panels were the best for wind farms and just analyzing things and just asking my questions and people are having time to answer me. So that was that was something that to an extent helped me open my eyes of possibilities. And yeah, this is like, I guess, the starting point. So after this, I went back to university for my final year and final year went really fast. I graduated after that. Um, I graduated and I'm in the clear now and then this is life. What do you do with your life? And I got this internship also from, from a representative of Bulgaria in the European Parliament. And I remember those three months were also maybe one of the most impactful that I had in terms of opening my mindset. I remember, first of all, going to Brussels by myself, still kind of navigating life, listening to music while I walk to, to the European Parliament every day, dress up, iron my shirts, try to look presentable as I can. And being in an internship, it was an interesting experience, like I said, maybe closely related to talent because it changed my perspective. So I went there with no expectations. I just wanted to experience how this machine works, how the European Parliament and how all these policy creators and how, how it works and to see it from the inside. So I'm super grateful for the opportunity. Of course, I was closely talking to the secretaries of this, of this person that I was interning for and I had some work I can I could have helped them I remember I also 
could go to different commissions to listen to different talks. One of the talks I remember was this talk about the transportation policies for 2030 and 2050, focusing more on trade and energy efficiency fuels and stuff like that, which are actually happening right now in Europe. So that was great. But like at the same time, I was like, what are those people there living and what are their strides to what are they trying to achieve? Do I see myself as being one of them? And the answer was no, to be fair. Nothing against the people. Of course, everybody has their own way and journey in life. But that was not something that I see myself. And also, I understood that the policies, if, especially if you're not a major party in the parliament, so you have like the majority vote to actually have some idea and then to get it pushed and to actually get a majority vote to be voted for in implementation in Europe, of course. Normally, it takes about a year to implement some law. But if you're a smaller party, you have to change different perspectives of your idea to get voted from different parties and talk to different people, trying to balance that out. So politics, of course, and try to balance in different things. And then this is then presented and people vote. And now if you get the majority vote, you get it written in, in the law or, or implemented, whatever the case may be. So for me, that was super eye opening because I was expecting things to be happening so much faster, especially when most of my life, I was always looking towards the US. So I was comparing the US and Europe. And Europe is super slow in terms of implementation. And I'm not sure how the US works, but I imagine that it's just a faster pace. I was disappointed, maybe, to an extent that it takes so much longer than expected for some new idea to be implemented in, throughout Europe, right? Yeah, I had, I had a, lot of, a lot of time uh, on my plate. So I started researching different things. We started talking about startups, started talking about small and medium sized businesses. And I remember as clear as a day, I started researching and just reading articles on entrepreneur.com and inc.com. Of course, they've been written to create this imaginary vision that startup owners are always these millionaires, billionaires that create these ideas that can change the world. Something in me has been ignited at that point. And I wanted to have this impact to have this impact outside of myself and not just to be on myself to, to work and have this normal life and not help other people so this is like one of the things that i'm doing right now in terms of like showing my backstory to the outside world which is to an extent scary but i need to push through this and show myself to the world because that's the only way we can grow that was the the key one of the key moments in in my life that i actually find out that startups exist and then small, medium sized companies are not just traditional companies, but you can go to the US, have this whole Silicon Valley and this this community in place that people actually gather. And it's super interesting to, to be in that particular place and learn from others and grow businesses, go through investments. So that was when the Spark has been initiated. I had this idea for an app and this app just me being myself, I always want to learn new things and try to develop myself with different skill sets. I had this app idea and I started playing around with Android. I think it was it's it's written in Java, I'm playing with Java, trying to find out different templates, trying to go through different forums to learn how to code, to create this small concept and idea that I can make this app and teach myself through online education, courses, articles, videos, whatever the case may be. And I remember I, I got stuck to a certain point and then that's where the, the answer kind of like appeared out of nowhere. I saw this ad for Telerik Academy, which is this programming course that lasts about a year, year and a couple of months. And I was like, this is it. 